Hey guys, I'm about to meet up my mate who's about to show me part of his Seiko collection. So, stick around. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I'm here outside, I'm waiting for my mate and he promised to bring out his Seiko collection. So, stick around and you will see some awesome Seiko watches. Alright guys, let's start off with this beautiful Seiko Sea Urchin and uh, yeah, this is a beautiful Seiko Submariner-esque uh, type of dial watch and it's really nice looking, uh, it's a cool alternative to Seiko uh, SKS uh, but it's it sh for sure it's not the SKS series but uh, however I have a full box of Seiko watches to show you and these are some of the first Seiko quartz chronographs and you can see uh, this belongs to my friend and uh, he's an avid watch collector he has all sorts of watches uh, from low end to high end and he just likes watches and we just stick around we have a coffee and we talk to watches unfortunately it wasn't in English so uh, that's why I'm narrating this for you and <clears throat> this was a beautiful Seiko A I don't know something one of the first Seiko course chronographs uh, but would have had a beautiful bracelet uh, right now I, I was asking him which one which two watches would you pick out of these two boxes so he he picked this uh, bull hat and um, an SKS uh, here we have uh, another uh, Seiko 6 uh, this is a Pogue from the Pogue line but of course Pogue is uh, the orange one the yellow one and all the others are just Seiko chronographs however uh, uh, my pick was uh, like you can see uh, the Pogue and uh, the chronograph he has on his wrist this is a 6138 I believe uh, not 100% sure but these are basically similar with different color combos and uh, I think on the NATO band uh, this one looks awesome and the Pogue is of course my favorite Seiko vintage watch of them all. Uh, Bullhead is a cool watch but uh, I believe and think it is my opinion and he agrees that uh, it's not a watch that's so much wearable. Uh, it's not a wearable watch uh, in the sense that <clears throat> Uh, it's not very practical. Uh, it has, it's kind of chunky. Uh, it's quirky, and he likes to call it the Seiko Invicta uh, in terms of style, because on the wrist it's not so comfortable. It has those pushers that are slipping on your uh, sleeves. But however, I do love the color combo on this one. The color combo on this one is just great, and has the original uh, fishbone. Um, type of bracelet which is worth very money and here's my mate uh he's he's that guy this is that guy uh he also sold me uh he also sold me his rolex uh yeah this is a <clears throat> bow hat it's super collectible watch and it's fun to look at it's fun for collection and this fetch some high prices in the seiko vintage market but um i gotta tell you if you're planning to buy this watch to wear uh, it's not for everyone, uh, and it's kind of quirky watch. Uh, however, this little here is Seiko Chronograph, and they basically have pretty much all the same movements. This, this is a uh, <clears throat> Seiko in-house automatic, first one of the first automatic chronographs along with the Zenith, and this one has Beats or Rise uh, Seiko band, which is awesome and just looks great on this watch. It's not original to that watch, but uh, you can see that here is showing me the Fishbone band, which is very rare to find on the, this year. And speaking of rare bracelets, the Beats or Rise is one of my favorite types of them all. Uh, This is one of his boxes with the Japanese string, and uh, this is here comes here comes my favorite Seiko of them all. Uh, I was pestering for him to sell me this one, but uh, he said he will think about it. And when he 
when it's up for sale, I will be the first one to be offered this here beauty. And I just love the color combinations. I did own the Bogue, uh, but the, the bezel, inner bezel on this one, you can see the, this bright yellow. Uh, it fades over the time very much. I had the Bogue with the faded bezel, it was white, so I didn't like it. I eventually sold it, but I regret it now. Here we have Seiko SKS variation for this is uh, uh, 150 meters and uh, for the American market here we have a uh, Seiko uh, orange uh, black monster, not orange, black monster and this is the first generation and the, with the brightest home. And here this is all part of a little Seiko history on uh, all these watches and I want to show you the bracelet on this one how nicely it's done. This is one of the f nicest bands and bracelets I have and also speaking of bracelets beats arise on a wrist shot I had to film this for you guys this watch is so wearable and it looks it doesn't look that special uh, and uh, in the box but on the wrist it's so great and speaking of wrists uh, this watch also looks fantastic on the wrist this is a same Seiko chronograph but in the blue and Pepsi variation. Some people um, prefer this or the Pogue and I always like the Pogue but on the NATO it just works great and this is a Citizen chronograph basically they counterpart and Seiko Citizen are like a rivals and they uh, always try to match up something like this. Here we have King Orient and this is a just a awesome looking Orient on um, and I think that the the better stripe would suit it very well, but this is just a great orient. And you have another orient. This is an orient multi eye perpetual calendar, uh, and uh, this is also a vintage orient. I believe they have some here. But at the end, I just wanted to single out which two watches I picked up out of the box, and these two watches uh, I would personally EDC Connor pick out of his box and take it for myself if someone said hey you can have it so yeah uh, that's it uh, guys thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this little uh, clip of an awesome Seiko collection from my mate and he has a lots of watches so I will try to get him to show you a bit more so thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up subscribe and tell me in the comment section what do you think of this Seiko collection